Hello, it is Thursday, September 13th. I am so thankful you choose to listen to this every single Tuesday, Thursday. There's a lot of things out there for your ears to get penetrated by, and you choose Pat McAfee Show 2.0. And for that, I will forever be thankful. Our Tuesday show made some news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it did. It ended up on the TMZ for a good thing, not mm -hmm. a, yeah. which is yeah. very out of the norm. Normally, you end up on TMZ, Jerry Springer, Dr. Phil, you head to the hills, you hide. <laughs> this particular time, it was Richie Incognito's side of the story getting mm -hmm. out. Uh, I think a lot of people reacted well to the Richie Incognito interview, by the way. Got mm. a couple of people yelling at me for giving him a platform and shit like that. But I think, you know what? The guy's admitting fault and f that he fucked up and keeps it moving. TMZ, good on them for putting Those people probably didn't listen to the interview. Yes, that's yeah. that's a lot of the things that happen in this world, yeah. by the way. A little... Oh, I do uh, it every day. Meh, 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 meh. That's I those look, people. I look, at the, <laughs> <laughs> look at the headline, don't read the article, make a judgment off of that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Well, that's what fake news really is, I think, in the world that we live mm -hmm. in. Uh, Todd, Diggs, Nick, Zito, Ty, and Evan are joining me right now in the My Bookie Studio. Yeah. Everybody knows that since we've... Uh, become our own little independent operation. B since we become free agents, there's been one company that has backed us the entire time, and that's mybookie.ag. Use promo code PAT. You get a 100% bonus on your first deposit up to $1,000. It's not being ridiculous. Yes, yeah, seriously. Okay? They're giving away goddamn money. But also, there's an extra $25 free if you wait until at least 7 p.m. to sign in and make an account. <laughs> they need the nighttime accounts to be created. Mm -hmm. Post 7 p.m., you get an extra $25 with promo code PAT. Can't beat it. Why wouldn't you wait? Why? Yeah. What? I, why wouldn't you I do understand why people are creating during the day more than at night. Yeah, because they're hearing us say, go create one right now. <laughs> oh, With that yeah. being said, listeners of the show, you guys crashed their goddamn site the other day. So they're like, if you wait till 7 p.m., let things slow down a little mm -hmm. bit, we'll give you an extra $25. My bookie is slowly becoming not only the great, they're already the greatest gambling, but the largest as well. Oh, yeah. You can gamble on everything there. We would only urge you to gamble at places that we enjoy gambling at, and that is mybookie.ag. It's a one-stop shop to make money. You're investing in your brain. You think something, go make money money off it with mybookie.ag you play you win you get paid with that being said today we got three conversations with people i think you're going to find very interesting the goat of all goats in the history of punning shane leckler uh -huh. stopped by to talk to us for like 15 minutes pretty open it, very open mm -hmm. this is a guy that's been playing football a long time talked about the state of the nfl the future of the nfl and also the first time he'd ever been cut, just a couple weeks ago, and I'm excited for you to hear that. Kyle Brandt, host of Good Morning Football. He's there's okay, so there's Nate Burleson, mm -hmm. there's the lady Kay, I believe her name is, mm -hmm. and then there's two white guys. Mm -hmm. Look very similar. Shregs is one of them. Mm -hmm. Kyle Brandt is the other one. They are very electric human beings. And Kyle Brandt comes on this show and talks to us and is absolutely hilarious promoting his new show. I think you're gonna enjoy that. And then to wrap it up at the end. WWE Hall of Famer Mark Henry has a 30-minute conversation with us just about life, uh -huh. about his life in the WWE, traveling around the world, and also the evening he carried me home when I was puking all over the place. <laughs> he and I got off to a good start. Speaking of a good start, the NFL had a big weekend. Mm -hmm. They said ratings were up across the board, except for on ESPN and NBC. Sucks for them. Let's keep it moving. But NFL ratings up from last year were up, which is good. Do you have to think that this is potentially because of the National Anthem not being a focal point of the weekend? I think it's Nike. I think it's got to help. Nike you, cured all. You think Nike <laughs> cured all? <laughs> the Nike commercial cured all. That Nike commercial, by the way, very, very motivating. Yeah. And if you take, this is like anything, though. If you take a uh, quote out of context, which mm -hmm. is what Nike did on purpose, yep. mm -hmm. believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything, they put that on the internet the day before the full commercial mm -hmm. reads. Everybody and their mom is like, oh, this is because he kneeled and sacrificed his whole his career. And then they play the commercial, and it's like, no, no, no. This is about everybody believing uh -huh. in something, mm -hmm. sacrificing their whole life to make it to the top. It was pretty genius marketing by Nike, and they either pissed you off or made you motivated. What, no matter the case, their stock is up now, and <laughs> Nike is moving forward, making those little kids in Bangladesh make more shoes <laughs> than ever before. <laughs> but I do, I am happy that the NFL ratings are up. It's the best game. It's it, the best goddamn game. Yeah. I was just happy to see, like. During most of the games that I was watching, I was like, oh, do you know what? That was pretty violent week one. And there was not none of the uh, lowering the head penalties. The, the one penalty that uh, was gotten called, getting called a lot that I fucking hate 
is the falling on the quarterback penalty, which you cannot control. That's at all. changing the game. It is, isn't it? I mean, oh, we're going to have to punt. Nope, first down. You well, know what I mean? We it's talked like- to Carson Palmer the other day, and it was him who basically started. And this is something I missed. Everybody does a little self awareness. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll look in the mirror, I'll watch a little film, I'll listen to the tape. I fucked up by not asking Carson Palmer that he was basically the one who transitioned this whole quarterback rule change. Mm-hmm. Chemo Von Ohoff. Von Ohoff. <laughs> D-lineman for the Pittsburgh Steelers climbs in at Carson Palmer's knees. Uh-huh. He tears the ACL. He's up for a possible MVP that year. He's having the best year of his mm-hmm. entire life. When I asked him if he regretted anything, I was thinking he was going to lead into that. So I, I, I'm not too hard on myself. But that, that rule change with them crawling into the legs, no longer hitting low, that turns into the strike zone, which turns into the, uh, what is that, leaping or piling on yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Carson Palmer really set the things in motion for the whole NFL rules. And now if you're a D lineman, you're going to get paid a lot of money if you can figure out how to tackle a quarterback without getting a fucking penalty call. Yeah, so, I feel bad for somebody like you say you're you're hitting Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, you really got to wrap that dude up and drive. So to be able to control not falling and putting your He's slimmer this year, Todd. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the differentiator, right? You can't drive him to the ground, but if you fall on top of him, you're Every okay? single coach, though, in the history of oh, football I know. says you don't just tackle them yeah. to the ground. You tackle them through, through the, the ground. ground. <laughs> and it's like, I, I just, I'm just trying to get the motherfucker on the ground, to be honest. Literally, it's rap, lift, and drive is the fucking. That's old school, yeah. not new school. You're an old school player, Diggs. You're real old school. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you fix this for, like, defensive linemen, then? You can't. You have to. You literally have to basically arm tackle them and, like, with just your one shoulder and make sure – most of your body is on the side of them. <laughs> the interesting <laughs> thing here is, though, is it makes sense, though. You got guys getting $100 million guaranteed. They are the backbone of every single game. If some D lineman, who's also getting paid a lot of money, yeah. takes out a guy, the NFL sees the ratings crash, bang. The yeah. NFL sees merch sales crash, bang. They see the quality of the game, bang. Everything goes down. So it's like, okay, how do we make this right for everybody? I don't think you can Robert Mathis says he actually hates quarterbacks. That's his, I hate quarterbacks. I want to kill quarterbacks. He's teaching his kids to want to kill quarterbacks. That's so scary. That is, yeah, he's got them brands all over his goddamn body. He's a Q dog, and he hates quarterbacks. That's a real thing, and it's D linemen hate quarterbacks, but quarterbacks are all the money. It's like, I don't know how you're going to make them fit. That's fit. a really good point, because they'd rather throw five to ten of those penalties a week than have Aaron Rodgers or any other top yeah. quarterback. Yep land on his shoulder, break a collarbone with 300 pounds of defensive lineman on top of him, and then you can't watch a Packers game for the rest of the season. Yeah. Part of the show, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, I think he's the reason why this whole rule is up and at him because of goddamn uh, bar. bar, yeah. AB, yeah, all that That's stuff. literally the difference. Like, I would I will watch every Green Bay game because I want to see yeah, Aaron yeah. Rodgers, and he's not there. I won't watch a single one. No, I'm watching Deshaun no. Kaiser. As a Colts fan, as mm-hmm. a Colts fan, you will watch Green Bay yep. if Aaron Rodgers is playing. Yes. Just because that son of a bitch who says he didn't take Tordal <laughs> possibly takes Tordal at halftime and leads in week one a 17-zip comeback after not even being able to walk in the first half. It's like, you're not going to be able to watch other players do that. Right. Same thing with Tom Brady. If Tom Brady mm-hmm. gets hurt, you're like, well, well a lot of people might watch just watch a train wreck, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. whenever they were building, people were like, well, I want to watch Tom Brady work. Peyton Manning was the same thing. Mm-hmm. I want to watch Peyton Manning play. Yep. But you get them hurt because of a tackle it's like oh i don't i won't watch that anymore and you know the networks are behind all this oh they yeah. have those fucking meetings with the nfl they're like well are you guys gonna get the fucking stars hurt again nfl <laughs> <laughs> no we'll make rules about it that's definitely how it all yeah, comes to be you know think. it's one of those situations tonight Bengals and ravens yep asc north show <laughs> in the natty throw out the rule book <laughs> Record books. That too. <laughs> <laughs> These two teams, there's no love lost. No love lost here. Andy Dalton, potential playmaker of the year if he beats the Ravens tonight in Cincinnati. Well, got- Marvin Lewis gets another 10 year extension <laughs> if he wins on Thursday night football. I got the Ravens. I have no idea anybody that plays for the Bengals other than Kevin Huber and Andy Dalton. That's literally the only two people I know. And Randy Bullock's are kicker, I think. AJ Green's the other name that you should know. Besides that. Geno Atkins, but Eifert, Joe Mixon, Lisa Ann told us be high on Joe Mixon. Oh yeah, fantasy big, expert yeah. Lisa Ann. He had a big week one, and he, he did, did didn't he? Mm-hmm. She was she was spot on with that. She was. She told me to take Cole Beasley. I did. 
He had a decent week. Mm-hmm. Not the best. He's all right. He always has good a flex week. play. <laughs> so I do know the Bengals. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I, and the Ravens, what they do week when they blew out the Bills. Yeah. Blew out the Bills. They're riding high. How's T Sizzle playing? Old shrugs, old socks, old socks. Oh. So old. I don't know how he's still doing it. But it's early in the year. Old yeah, men yeah. early in the year still feel good. He'll probably take I a couple of games I still only had to play off. a quarter, too. Like, they were up 21 nothing in the first. They got Justin Tucker, Sam Cook, too. Flacco's elite again. <laughs> Crabtree actually caught the ball. It was wild. That's all Crabtree does, dude. You make fun of him for running slow. Crabtree runs no, 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 good no. routes and catches the ball. He's led the league in drops, like, the past few years. Really? Yeah. I mean, he's great. Like, he came out of college, like, had, like, the best hands ever. But sometimes he gets a little lackadaisical. Oh, he's not focusing <laughs> as not hard focus. as he could. Mm. Mm. He does have those nice Jordan brand cleats, though. Yeah. Always got that chain on, too. Keep the leap. Give me that. A couple <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that a couple times. I got the Ravens tonight. Minus one is what they are. I'm taking them, and I'm also taking the under. Thursday night football. Who's that? Is that Collinsworth? Uh, this year it's actually Fox. I think. I think it yep. got moved to Fox. It is Fox. And yeah. Amazon paid a shit ton of money for these Thursday night games. Seventy yep. million. So or it should be your boys, uh, Joey Buck and uh, Aikman. I believe. I can't wait to listen to them. I can't wait to listen to their sensual voices. People hate on Joe Buck all the time. I don't know why. I think him and Tariq are the only people that can call anything. Mm-hmm. He's so good. So good. And those hair plugs addiction. Mm-hmm. I'm all about <laughs> I'm all about Joe uh, Buck. I think ever since the Monday Night Football game, a lot of people are going to change their mind about Joe Buck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> somebody's going to be like, oh, I fucking hate Joe Buck. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you remember that Monday Night Football game? The, those are just the classic, like, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Because football only plays one game a week for your team, there's not local broadcasters. Yeah, it's yeah. all national. So there's no other option. So if you were to hear someone else call the game, they're probably going to do it in a terrible fashion. Well, Archie Manning, uh, he had, was like one or two bottles of red wine deep <laughs> <laughs> talking to my dad about the old days back whenever the Aints would play the Steelers. <laughs> and he had his teeth were all red, you know, and I think Eli was playing. They were watch- my yeah, dad yeah. was watching the Giants play, and uh, Joe Buck was calling the game. Yeah, Joe Buck hates Eli, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. And my dad was like, oh, fuck Joe Buck. My dad is just like, yeah, whatever, Archie. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'll ride with you, you know? And I think Archie even was like, but he's good, you know? He's good at what he does. He, everybody, if somebody says that you hate everybody, that's probably what you're looking for as a commentator, right? Yes. Uh, but now, granted, you could love everybody, too. That's the difference between a hype man, I guess, and mm-hmm. a negative prick. Well, especially in Buck's <laughs> position, Fox is always doing the NFC games. And it, they're always going to be prime time, like the Giants or yeah. Dallas. So everyone's going to assume he either loves or hates Dallas or loves or hates the Giants. Jerry Jerry Jones owns Fox, right? I mean, it, it seems as if they are always on TV. Yep. It, 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 right? Oh, yeah, they're America's Game of the Week almost every week. I mean, they're week, there because like. they get the ratings. So. Ratings down mm-hmm. in Dallas for the first time in a long time. Well, when you don't score any points, it's... Well, that doesn't make them choose to not watch it at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Something's happening in Dallas. And he was with Des Bryant right at a Beyonce and Jay-Z yeah. concert. Uh, wild. And did you see? Oh, there was like, there was a harem of women uh. dancing behind them. I, I was so, <laughs> a harem. You hear that? Pretty good. Pretty good work. There was a harem of women dancing behind them, though. And then Des and Jerry just sitting there. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Because Des spent the entire weekend literally sawing Don. The Dallas yep. Cowboys. That's Oh, and Dan Bailey, LOL, the whole thing. Made fun of the coach a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And here's Jerry smoozing with them while Jay and Bay are up there rocking. I think it's a very interesting move. Is Dez coming back to the Cowboys? Martavis did it. <laughs> well, yeah, back to the Raiders. Yeah, but he didn't fucking dog the Raiders publicly for a all while. weekend. Yeah, everybody else dog Gruden all weekend, not Martavis. <laughs> <laughs> that all I wish we could have got to the quarterback more. It was one of the least self-aware things I've ever seen in my Ugh. life. $90 million, a lot of money. I mean, maybe man. he could put Marty at the end. He's basically like just a skinnier uh, Bruce Irvin. <laughs> you think Martavis Bryant and Bruce Irvin are cut from the same cloth? I mean, they're both aliens. <laughs> Bruce Irvin is a dog, bro. Oh, I know. That guy is a <laughs> dog. I don't think Martavis is a dog. The Bruce reason- is running like a 4-4 coming off the edge. <laughs> And he hates everybody. <laughs> he was literally living on the street at one point. Bruce Irvin was literally living on the street at one point. Homeless human. Just a dog. Hates every. He likes me. I'm very lucky that he likes me. We've dapped each other up a couple times at the West Virginia thing. I'm very happy about that because Bruce is a hell of a player. Martavis isn't a dog enough. And the reason why I know that is because if you're a dog and... In- you you don't want to miss games. Yeah, you yeah. don't want to get suspended. Bruce Irvin, very different. Very he's 
He's a he's an animal of a human being on the field. He's come from hard, a lot of hard hard time stories, but we're talking about actual homeless shit. A lot of hard time stories in the NFL. Success normally comes from uh, tough cir- circumstances. That is something that can drive a lot of people. But Martavis, I don't think he's a dog enough because he's willing to fail a test. He's willing to to not mm-hmm. get rich because he's doing something stupid. In my eyes, I think they're different humans. But you put Marty on a fucking field, though. <laughs> And you line him up outside, that is a human that can really do some damage. Yeah, I was for talking him. strictly athletic ability. Does he care at all? Does Martavis Bryant care at all? And does it matter if he cares? Does it matter? Because I don't think he cared with the Steelers, and I saw him score, what, 16 touchdowns against the Colts in one night. That <laughs> yeah. motherfucker got one off his head to the front. I, th- I believe he cares when he's in between those lines, yeah. You think he does? Yeah. He's an alien. I man. never saw him, like, dogging it on the field. Did he ever. get paid at, uh, for the Steelers? No, because he was he left before his rookie contract ended. He gets oh. suspe- And he was up for another suspension, yeah. they said. And How? he's still up. There's, it's still unclear whether he's going to get suspended for another year again. And John Gruden was like, hey, we'll, tell hey, you we'll what, use man. the mods hey, here. Hey, tell man. you what, lock him in. <laughs> if they ain't going to suspend him for three weeks, man, we can get a couple deep balls out of the alien, man. <laughs> you think it's weird that, uh, hey, man, <laughs> locker room smelled like skunk this week, Marty. Yeah. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> we got that dang. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Uh, Mike Florio. Mike Florio posted a photo of a skunk. In there, and uh, the Raiders stink. We're not just on the football field or something like that. And I wanted to respond with, uh, I wanted to respond with the uh, the Pineapple Express <laughs> <laughs> whenever they're sitting behind the mm-hmm. yeah the tree and they're like smoking and pointing. Mm-hmm. It, that's such a funny thought that John Gruden is like. <sighs> Something smells like a skunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a skunk, John. <laughs> Yo, they're Gruden grinding up a lot of weed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just call the grinder that's the Gruden. <laughs> <laughs> when I played, we played in Oakland one time, and it was the first time after the weed was legalized. Yeah, yeah. This was the game that Peyton did. The play action 30 yard run to seal it, if you oh, do yeah, recall. Yeah. One of the greatest moments of Peyton's career, I think I've ever witnessed, because he was at the age where he wasn't an athlete anymore. He sh- and even when he was younger, he was a <laughs> giraffe running looking motherfucker. Yeah. So then he gets older, and there was a D lineman on the Raiders. It was at the end of the game. It was an important game, and uh, Peyton makes a call. And his D lineman goes, it's going out loud. He goes, it's going right here because he was with the Colts. So he knew the actual call, right? It, I think Dominic Rhodes was in the backfield, too, at the time. And you, the D lineman's like, it's going right here. He shifts the line, this D lineman, who out of nowhere, like while Peyton's under center, he hear, Peyton is less than 14 <laughs> inches away from this guy <laughs> calling out where the ball is going. And Peyton just goes, uh, okay, uh, huh. And he just pulls it himself. He pulls it himself. I don't even think Dommy knew it was yeah, happening. Yeah. And then he scampers for 35 yards. He slides it like the five-yard line. We kneel it out or whatever. And all you hear is, I guess, all the Raiders defense was like, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Baden could not wait to tell the story on the plane ride home. Could not wait. Because he knew it was going to be a topic of conversation. Anytime Peyton runs, yeah, the whole sure. world stops, right? And then it, whenever the story leads into that, the D lineman was like, it's going right here. And Peyton is literally making eye contact while he's saying, and that guy might have been right, by the way. Yeah. I, I think that guy was 100% right. <laughs> and then in the, in the end, though, in that Raiders locker room right after the game, that D lineman walks in. And everybody's like, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> what are you? Why would you tell Peyton that we know where the fuck it's going? Why don't you just run there? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what are you doing? But that game, there was a haze. It was the first time I've ever been a part of a stadium where there was a haze above it. Like, oh. a, like a weed haze. It was awesome. Nice. It was absolutely awesome. There was a legit haze, and you could smell it. It was, it was beautiful. And everybody obviously comes to me because they knew I was a vitamin intaker. And they're like, "This is pretty wild." I was like, "Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm literally in a heaven, right? Now, like in the clouds, literally in the clouds. Right? It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. That's just the difference with states that legalize it, though. Did you play in Denver after it was legal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You Remember, about, we yeah. were in the hotel, yeah, about and they gave yeah. the speech the night before. No matter what you do, could you? S- nobody can go to any dispensary. And then you go in. I go into my hotel room, and the windows are open, and I see a motherfucking dispensary <laughs> less than a block away with a guy with a gun outside. And I had to shut the blinds and lock myself in there because it was just like getting very tempting. <laughs> when we had two hours until a team meeting, and I'm just I'm ordering room service. 
I'm eating a pizza. I'm like, man, this thing could taste a lot better. <laughs> if only there was something that I could walk to. They're like, Should have told your room service. Be like, can you just go down there real quick? I, I see it's, it's a block away. I see, I see the guy with the fucking gun outside. Is there any way you can just walk in there with me some kush? And just come back. That'd be very nice of you. I've never been in a dispensary, though, because I, good teammate, did not go. You'd clean it out. I assume you'd walk in there and be like, I don't know, just give me all of this. <laughs> Chuck talking to me, though, is awesome. Pat, listen, can't have you doing any dispensary shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's legal in Colorado. It's not legal in the NFL. <laughs> okay, listen, I don't need that distraction. You go, and we got the entire defense going. <laughs> we don't need that. I'm like, uh, okay, all right. I'll just fucking lock myself in my goddamn jail cell in the hotel room. <laughs> and I know that it's right down the street. I posted that photo yesterday. It was a throwback, for throw, uh, throwback Thursday photo on Wednesday. Let's have a day. <laughs> Completely forgot. Thought it was Thursday, by the way. That's, that's how I'm living right now. That's a way back Wednesday, baby. You're goddamn yeah. right. Just with a TBT in there instead. <laughs> uh, but I, I posted about Chuck Pagano's travel rules. And Chuck did have the strict. We had an entire meeting and training camp about what's allowed and what isn't allowed. So if you wear dress pants, you don't have to wear a tie. Mm-hmm. If you don't wear dress pants, you have to wear a sport coat and a tie. If your shirt doesn't have at least four buttons and a collar on it, you can't wear it. Like, there's an entire list. No white soles on your shoes. So guys had, like, Gucci shoes. They were, like, $400. They had white soles. Chuck's like, can't do it. Can't wear them. Take them to fuck off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> right? So Chuck was a very, he was a stickler for, uh, I want to look good. He's an Italian. I mean, yeah, that's yeah, what obviously. you Italians do. I do like do. the if-then, though, yeah, the yeah, little logic good. statement there. That's yeah, good. Yeah, uh, so if, options. If, if you're wearing dress pants, you don't have to wear a sport coat. If you have jeans on, nice jeans, by the way, they can't have any rips in them, no mm-hmm. white sure. seams. Yeah. If you have that, you have to wear a sport coat. It was like, he had rules. It was a full rules session. He was like, I'm going to be wearing my Ferragamo shirt. Okay, I'll be wearing a couple thousand dollars shoot. Try to look as good as me. I don't want to look with a bunch of fucking bums whenever we shoot. <laughs> it was just a beautiful thing, right? So I took his rules and I hired a local seamstress and I turned T-shirts, black T-shirts, into five button having polos. And she put on a collar on the top, like a big Love collar. That, yeah. So I literally made my own line of shirts to travel. <laughs> in. Wore the same ones every single travel. I had these black pants that were uh, AG, so they were stretchy pants, but they looked like dress pants. So I didn't have to wear the sport coat, and I just wore these T-shirts. Right? I walk on the plane the first time. Chuck goes, "You're such a fucking ass." <laughs> <laughs> I go, Chuck, five buttons right here. Got a collar, <laughs> dress pants here, and dress shoes. There ain't nothing we can do about this here. This is all of your rules to a T. He said, you just had to do it, didn't you? <laughs> you just had to find a way through it. I'm like, I look good, though. Do I not look good? He was like, I guess. <laughs> this is not what I thought. If I ever get a head coaching job somewhere else, I'm going to have to alter the rules. Right? Uh, right? If then, if you're going to give me loopholes, <laughs> then I'm going to take them. <laughs> Just, I would have hated me too, but as I was writing the caption yesterday, I was like, oh, I would have fucking hated me if I'm the goddamn <laughs> coach. So he screenshots my Instagram post yesterday and texts me and goes, you're a fucking idiot. I love you, man. And I was like, thanks. In that photo, I look good in it. I look good in that photo. Matt Bowen, the Colts photographer, took a good shot. Probably the best photo i've ever had of me i was very thankful that is good those shoes are fire thank you but the story of literally hiring a seamstress to get through his his travel wear is one of my favorites because he and i were not boys at the time he and i were not boys until the uso tour so it was literally i just walk on and he's like this fucking guy <laughs> and i think about him and grigson talking like chuck would be like you see what fucking McAfee just did? And Grigson goes, yep, I hate him. I try, to get rid of him. I try to get rid of him. Mercy wouldn't fucking let me, Chuck. That's the way it goes. So is it not the norm when you see players walking into the game like Cam and Beckham and A.B. and like Jalen Ramsey who like like to, like they like, like to show out and like dress up a lot? Is that the norm in the NFL locker room? Or? you got to remember there's 53 guys on the team, yeah, right? So there's 53 guys. you got some rednecks on that offensive line too. There's It, it all depends on the coach. There was – there's some teams that let you wear, like, your sweats, mm-hmm. but you have to have a polo on, which is a terrible, terrible look. look. Terrible. I would never – In a, Rich Rodriguez did that to us once in college, and Pat White was like, hey, dog, like, <laughs> this looks terrible. Like, you make us wear this polo into these sweats. It just didn't look good. Every coach kind of has their own thing, you know, because traveling – Look good, feel good. They have that that whole situation. But some coaches are just like, fuck it, just don't look like if, an idiot. If I know? got money, I'm going to show out. 
Yeah, see, there's guys like you that want to do that. Yeah, you're an Italian guy. And then their Pat Anger, he wore the Colts polo that they <laughs> gave him on the away games. That's That was the only, like, dress shirt he had was a Colts polo. Yeah, and, yeah. and then it was very obvious he got this suit coat from Goodwill. It was like a, <laughs> it was like a sport coat that he had on. He had jeans and boots on. It was like there's a lot of those guys, too, you know. So it's trying to get everybody uniform. In travel is a very interesting thing because you got a lot of different humans in there, uh-huh. and you got a lot of rich humans in there too. So it's a, a lot of different backgrounds. Andrew Luck's not much on a tailored no. fit, is he? No, he just go right off His the rack. right off the rack. Right off the rack. He has a very interesting look. Doesn't yeah, he? yeah, the face, the whole thing. His jacket, <laughs> His jacket is always way too big. Happy birthday to him, by the way. He's cool. got a real hipster dress. Don't oh, you see that? What's that? All yeah, right. Lev Bell. Oh, yeah. I've mm-hmm. been on the case here for a couple of months. Yep. I've been on this case here a couple of months. Everybody's starting to pick up on it. I think. I think there was an ESPN station that even started talking about it. it was literally, I think two months I've been on this case. Every single Colts post, Lev Bell jumps in on it. And Lev Bell isn't happy in Pittsburgh, and I think we have the money to pay him. I, Chris Bauer needs to make that goddamn play. And then, and then Ebron responded to it and said, you could just come tell him to, to his face, bro. New locker room, fire, too. <laughs> <laughs> got a whole new facility. I told him the other day, I, I responded to him the other day, told him we got good houses and restaurants out here. Things very cheap here in, in Indianapolis. I'm going to turn you guys in for tampering. This is unacceptable. <laughs> I'm a free agent, bro. Shirts on sale today, by the way. Yeah, at some right. point this <laughs> afternoon. New merch on sale. We are all currently unemployed, basically, so if you would buy merch, we'd appreciate it. Zito is up until, like, midnight last night designing these shirts. It's very nice of you. Uh, Zito, great work by you, by Thank the way. you. It means a lot. You and your goddamn briefcase. It's a good briefcase. Now he's got a tape measure, by the way. It's a whole new Zito. <laughs> it's nice that we have new merch so I could actually have something to wear to work. <laughs> it was tough. <laughs> You we got leave a free bars- agent shirt on for five days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only got two of them. So you do the math. This and one of them was drenched. Yeah, from the Colts concert. Yeah. Because all I had was all my bar stool yeah. shirts. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I just it feels weird putting those on right now after everything that just happened. And I had no clothes to wear. All I wear is t shirts and jorts or tanks and jorts. That's literally all I wear. That's why that dress code with chuck was such an interesting situation so now we finally and to be honest if you don't buy the merch it's okay we'll keep creating them strictly because i need a fucking wardrobe (laughs) (laughs) strictly strictly because we need a wardrobe over here uh doug marone says that he hasn't watched a super bowl since he started coaching um that makes no sense to me i don't believe it well he said he said it's a reminder that his team failed this season doug marone i don't uh, he's now granted good lifeguard him, PFD, Big Cat there, <laughs> Shad Khan's Pool Paradise, swimming laps. I like that a lot. I like what he did with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I assume last year was tough pill to swallow that it was 100% him and his coaching staff's fault yep. why they didn't beat the Patriots, so I might be turned off to it as well. But saying you've never watched the Super Bowl is just lunacy, especially in the coaching world. You have friends that are probably coaching in the Super Bowl. I'd assume you're pulling for them. I, and Doug Marone seems like a football guy. That Super Bowl seems like a— Growing up, you weren't a fan. Never turned it on. No, no, since, since he started, since he's been head coach. Still, flip yeah. the switch when you. I, yeah, I, like me as a head coach, I get, I understand that a little bit, but like I would just tune in to be like, oh, this is what, like I would, I want to <laughs> tune in and be like, uh, maybe not. I, Doug I'm Marone, now second guessing my theory. Has Doug Marone never been on a coaching staff and made the Super Bowl? I don't know. He was, he was with the Bills before the Jags, so. It makes a lot of sense why they did what they did with Blake Bortles then uh, <laughs> for that New England Patriots yeah. game. Never made the fucking Super Bowl once in all of his coaching years. I think that's not normal. I think even as a like an assistant at some point, you normally make it. What year was the Saints uh, versus Colts? Two thousand nine. Oh, he was Saints two thousand six, two thousand eight. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be tough. Drew Smelled Brees. it. Drew Brees and his goddamn baby. <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> Todd, we'd be sitting here. We'd be free agents in the media world. Uh huh. But at least we'd have one Super Bowl ring. <laughs> It wasn't for Drew Brees and his miraculous stuff. Oh, I know. Would you wear that every day? I no, nobody no. does that. That's a that's I a would. that's a sports Sorry. moment I will never forget. Like I I I live it right now, seeing it in my brain, watching it at my friend's house at the Super Bowl party and that play. Which happening. one? The the heartbreaker. The onside of, kick of, of or Hank. the pick six yeah. or the pick six. No, the onside kick. The onside kick is the one, huh, that Colts fans really remember. That's the one I remember. Because in my head, the pick six six is what I remember. Because, to be honest, that's so early in the game, that onside kick. There's so much in my head that could have happened. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I stepped on the field in the second half except for to hold the ball. I I don't even think I stepped foot on the field except for a 51-yard field goal hold that 
was nowhere near going through the uprights with Matt Stover. The, <laughs> the full conversation he was having back there before that kick, too, by the way. You would have thought the entire Stover family was back there. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. You can do it, Matt. Biggest stage, Matt. Come on, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Jesus Christ. I don't know if he can help you now, bub. He, it was, that was the only time I think I even stepped on the field in the second half. But in my head, that pick six was the moment yeah. that just sucked the life out of me because I thought – there was a chance for it at any given time. Mm -hmm. But Colts fans very much connected to that onside kick. And while I was walking off the field, while the confetti and the baby and the whole thing, I was like, ah, yeah, we'll be back here next year. You know? <laughs> we almost went completely undefeated. Right. And then you get in the locker room, and it's just like the sorrow around. It's like everybody knows that this is – this was not a normal year. This was Peyton Manning disappeared to an island for like a month and a half. Like literally just went off the grid, disappeared. Reggie Wayne, I don't even think talked to anybody. Not that he ever talked to me. <laughs> I don't think he talked to anybody though. And you just watch the vets. There's just not even. It was the most somber environment I'd ever been in in my entire life. And I was like, oh, we're not going back next year. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we just gonna do this, guys? <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> We didn't lose until we chose to lose, and then this shit happened. We'll, we'll be back next year, and then you start seeing the NFL happen, where people leave, things yeah. happen, mm -hmm. bang, bang, boom, and then two years later, we're completely duffied. And it's like, oh, this is why <laughs> it all makes a lot of sense on why everybody was kind of bummed out. It makes a lot of sense. Todd, do you remember when uh, Jerome Bettis fumbled on the one-yard line, and then Ben Roethlisberger tackled uh, Nick, Harper. Nick Harper, and then Banner Jack, one of the most accurate kickers in history, pushed one wide right? Uh, no. no. No, you don't. And then do you remember no. uh, hearing a story that if any other human on the Colts defense would have picked that ball up, it's a touchdown. <laughs> Nick Harper just so happened to get stabbed, stabbed in the fucking quad <laughs> <laughs> the night before by his girlfriend or fiance or something. Anybody else on the team picks that ball up, it's a touchdown. Just the guy that got stabbed picked it up. Even though it didn't cost him the game, I have fucking hated Jerome Bev since that day. Since that day, I, I hate Trump better just because he sucked on our interview. Yeah, yeah that was horrible. <laughs> I don't like him at I all. I could have told you that, that motherfucker. Because <laughs> of that fumble, you thought he was going to suck on our interview. Yeah. <laughs> he was the king of one yard touchdowns. You're not going to give him one little pass? No. They didn't even lose. You guys didn't even lose the game. Don't care. <laughs> it seemed he fumbled that interview that as whole, well. That whole, uh. fair, that whole farewell bullshit season, they were just giving him Mickey Mouse touchdowns on the one, and he can't <laughs> hold on to one? Well, he had that rubber sleeve, too. Always. It it's seemed as if that was cheating. It was like a grip sleeve he had on it. gets a little wet. Yeah, got a little slick there. Ball pops out. <laughs> Stabbing victim picks it up. <laughs> ben Roethlisberger makes a tackle. It's all changed in the game. I guess Vin uh, Vanderjack did like a money symbol, too, before he kicked it. Mm -hmm. he... He did a money symbol oh, before he kicked it, and then he almost move. missed the sideline. He, 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 like, pointed a cower or something. Yeah, he did like, something But there's build. a video after of, like, eight people, like, cower, a few people on the Steelers' sideline, a few, few people on the Colts' sideline, and they all say he missed it, but, like, their reactions are so different that it's hysterical. Vanderjack uh. was not well-liked. No. Okay? I went to the same college as him and ended up on the same uh, NFL team as him. I've never heard a good story about him. That is one human that I've never heard Peyton a good story. didn't st like him. Duh. Peyton and him, I guess, were friends until he came out and blamed Peyton and Dungey for losing. And that, and then he went on late night TV and mocked him missing that kick. He went on Letterman and mocked <laughs> basically the whole operation. <laughs> and that was when you lose the teammates, by the way. Mm. That's something I've always been very proud of, is that my teammates have always liked me. Yeah. And I think that's a very big deal. But Vanderjack and also equipment managers, athletic trainers, the team, I very much... I took a lot of pride in that. Vanderjack, though, never heard a good story about him. Not a single. I haven't heard of him since either. West Virginia, nothing but bad stories about him. Indianapolis Colts, they don't talk about him ever. He's like somebody that never existed. And then every once in a while, a story will pop up and it'll not be a favorable one. <laughs> it's like a bad one, you know. Vinatieri said whenever he was up in New England, because uh, kickers, we all deal with K-balls. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so kickers deal with K-balls. And your equipment manager and the away team's equipment manager break in the balls for 30 minutes before the game. It's a very much a kicker's fraternity thing. And we always, it's very, just like you're going to hear from me and Shane, the punting kicking community is normally pretty tight. There's some douchebags in there. Jay Feely's one of them. <laughs> Vanderjack was also another one because of this story I heard. Now, I never worked with Vanderjack. I've never met Vanderjack. So this is all just hearsay and third-party stories. But Vanderjack was a guy who would tell the equipment manager to send in the terrible ball 
for like a big kick for the away team. So, so yeah. So Vinatieri wow. would have to go out on the field, and they would see like ball seven. So there's seven balls. Yeah, yeah. You break in the first four for the K ball. So the first four balls are broken in. Equipment managers deal with the K ball ref. You get, hey, here's the four balls that the refs okayed. Here you go. We're going to use these. Now, granted, if there's four punt returns to the house and the returners keep the balls, then you got to go, fuck, we got to use the last three that haven't been broken in at all. A broken in ball takes five to seven yards added to it. So it's like a five to seven yard difference. If you have a stronger leg, not as much, but it's still a, a a pretty big difference there. And I guess Vanderjack was a notorious guy that whenever somebody had to kick a field goal or as a big moment would somehow get the shitty ball and throw it in there and like really? just fuck over the other guy. Yeah, it's just like uh, all these stories I hear about him are just bad. bad. Now, is that true? I don't know. I don't know if that's true. And I don't know if that happened to Vinatieri or if he's just telling a story of something he heard because I don't think Vinny's ever met him either. Vinny came in after he left. Yeah. It's just every story you hear about him, not good. It's not good. And that's that sucks. That sucks to have that as your legacy, you know? Well, and Peyton wasn't really outspoken like that. Like, was he when he, like, took a shot at him, you know, calling him an idiot kicker, saying he got liquored up at the Pro Bowl? Like, he liquored doesn't up, usually do that, does liquored he? Liquored up idiot kicker. Yeah. I'm at the Pro Bowl. I'm playing football with a lot of the best players on earth. I'm trying. I'm not worried about a liquored up idiot kicker <laughs> making a comment. <laughs> and it was because he came out and talked shit on Peyton and yeah, Dungeon. Right. Yeah. So that was, and they asked him in the Pro Bowl interview with Peyton, like, uh, do you have any thoughts on what Mike Vanderjack had to say, and he was in Peyton's like, I just threw a touchdown to fucking, I think, Randy Moss, possibly. <laughs> I'm not worried about a lick it up idiot. And I think it, anytime you take a shot at Peyton Manning in Indianapolis, and then he responds, you probably count your days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guy's got a fucking he statue. He was disowned by all fans. Yeah, guy's right. got a statue up there. You're not going to take a shot yeah. at that yeah. guy. Uh, human, who I'm really good friends with, and you're going to learn a lot about right now, I think. Uh, this guy... He opened up a bit, actually. Just a good old boy. Mm -hmm. Been around football a long goddamn time. Experienced his first cut just a couple weeks ago. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the GOAT. That's actually what I call him whenever he calls or we speak on the phone. What up, GOAT? Seven-time Pro Bowler, nine-time All-Pro, which means the media liked him. He was most recently on the Houston Texans. He was a mainstay on the Raiders for a long time with Janikowski. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying this. He's going to be the second punter inducted into the Hall of Fame. Absolute living legend for the brand, Shane. Old ass Leckler. Oh, thanks, Pat. <laughs> Did you enjoy that? I had to sneak in that old ass in there because that's exactly what you are. You're old I heard as, it. Yeah, you're old as balls. What are you up to these days, man? Houston Texans went with a rookie instead of the old grizzled vet. What are you up to now? No, nah, you know, just kind of, I mean, I'm still punting a little bit during the week. Uh, you know, not, not the kicking schedule that they had me on it's pretty much like once maybe twice a week and that's it and uh just trying to stay ready in case anybody needs somebody later on the year like around thanksgiving <laughs> so you're just sending out a you just sound that heads up to everybody by the way uh if you're thinking about making a playoff run it's a little bit later in the season old shane lecker will be ready to go so you are still going to keep at it yeah I am. i'm not gonna you know kind of talk to the wife and uh kids and stuff i'm not gonna retire until you know probably after the super bowl uh just because i mean i spent the entire all season program did all that you know all the running all the lifting never missed a day you know and all through training camp i feel like that would be a waste if i just threw it away right now so i'm just gonna stay you know prepared as much as much as i need to and uh you know i'll listen to any phone calls anybody send out any feelers to shane leckler uh, no, not really. I know there's a couple of teams that kind of, um, after watching the first week, I think there's a couple of teams that may need someone. Uh, will you pick and choose where you go? Will it be a good situation? The Pittsburgh Steelers fans tweet me every single time Jordan Berry <laughs> goes on the field to come out. I'm assuming there's some other spots that you've looked at after watching the first week. Will you pick and choose? I've what had, uh, I'm not on Twitter at all, but I've heard those. Uh, exact words. So <laughs> either if you're going to come out of retirement or I'm going to go up there, maybe, I don't know, whatever's going on with that. Um, how are you feeling? How is the body? Towards the end of last year, did your leg get tired? And was it the first time in your long, very historic and incredible career, did you feel like you still had it at the end of the year last year? Or are you feeling just like your mid-30s, early 30s still? 
Well, you know, like towards the end of the year, you know, I was I was kind of pressing to kind of make another Pro Bowl there, and I ended up at gross average, a little over forty nine, and uh, and I was like, you know what, let's go out and swing hard, you know, each time, and let's redline a few of these and see what happens, and then I was, you know, I was just kind of chasing another Pro Bowl. We were two and fourteen. I mean, so I was a little bit, I guess you would say, selfish in a sense, but you know, I was kind of trying to get back to the Pro Bowl one more time, and then, uh, you know, I felt great going, you know through the last part of the season. I hit a lull there in the middle, man. I, I just – it was just like, you know, you start losing so many games, and you're like, Jesus, I can't, you know, shake this. You know, it starts bugging you in the locker room. And on an everyday basis, you know, driving in every morning, you're like, shit, you know, what is he going to say today? <laughs> you know, I'm tired of hearing we're so close. We're so close. No, we're not. We're 2-10. <laughs> you know, so um, I'm just – you know, I, I'm just – would say you know i was ready to go another year for sure especially coming off of last year i mean i was second or third or whatever in gross average i never thought i'd be beat out by a rookie so you feel you felt very good going into the year this year is another pro bowl something that'll help you with closure with your career i mean you've accomplished literally everything you could accomplish as a punter you had a lot no the only thing would be the only thing to be straight honest with you pat the only reason i'm still playing this game to win a super bowl that's it that's the only reason your dick is a lot bigger when you have a Super Bowl. Right? <laughs> hey, I agree. <laughs> uh, you live in Houston full time. You've got a chance to go back home there. That's why you left the Raiders. How is life in Texas and in Houston at the moment? It's good. Uh, we're getting a shitload of rain right now, man. This is ridiculous. And then we got something else about to kick up in the Gulf. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's not a hurricane. And um, I know that people up in North Carolina, South Carolina, probably about to go through what we had to go through last year. So, you know, I know what they're about to go through. It's going to suck for a few months. Uh, you're a stay-at-home dad now, kicking every once in a while? What are you doing? You're just a stay-at-home dad? You're yeah, just... now I went, up work, I went up and worked with the uh, the high school kids the other day, went playing with those guys. And, uh, man, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dang, those coaches were screaming at those kids for no reason. I was like, geez, I don't know how you guys put up with this. But, uh, you know, I went out working with, with the kids up there and, uh, you know, got a report back that the first punt the kid hit was like 46 yards, uh, fair caught inside the 10. I was like, dude, just skip college. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the Texans, Bill O'Brien was there. Deshaun Watson comes in. Dabo Swinney called him the Michael Jordan of football, basically. When you were there, you got a chance to witness a lot of things happen. I mean, you've been in the league a long time. You've seen the rules change. You've seen the media change. You've been through a couple CBAs. You've been there, done that with everything. Do the Houston Texans have a legit team if they can keep it together down there? I think they do. Uh, you know, Deshaun was one of the first quarterbacks, unless you date all the way back to my rookie year, my first two years in the league, where we had Rich Gannon, who was league MVP. God, you are but so fucking Deshaun old. Deshaun is the yeah. first guy that I've ever, even down 14 or 10 going into the fourth, you never felt out of it. Never felt out of a game with Deshaun at quarterback. And, you know, Dabo can say what he wants to about the Michael Jordan deal. I think um, that's, a, that's a big shoe to fill, but – I, you know, I think they got what they need at the quarterback situation. Is J.J. Watt a superhuman for real, or what is he? Ah, man, dude. I'm waiting for him to mess up, to <laughs> do something wrong, <laughs> because there's no possible way you're this good a guy and football player constantly. But, um, you know, he's one of my really good friends on the team. He, as a matter of fact, when I signed with the, uh, with the Texans out of Oakland, he was the first guy to reach out to me. We've been friends ever since, and the whole time I'm like, dude, you, something's going to happen. Something's going to come out because there's no way you're this perfect. Yeah, he's like Tim Tebow without all the corniness. <laughs> exactly. And he's good. Exactly. And he's really good. Um, you told me the other day on the phone that you and Cushing just kind of hang out. What's Cushing up to? How are you guys boys? What do you do, drink beers? What does Cushing do? No, man, we um... – you know, we go bow hunting a lot down at uh, – I got I lease some land uh, not far from my house right now, and we go bow hunting and hang out down there at the property a lot. And do shit like that. I mean, Kush, I got Kush into bow hunting about a year ago, and now he's probably as addicted to that as you can get. So, um, you know, we're just waiting for Vinatieri to give us a call to go up to his place he's got now. <laughs> Dude, he's making bank off of that too. It's like a country club for freaking <laughs> hunters up there. 
Yeah, I know. So that would be a good place to do our next show in person. Oh, yeah, you think it, I'll send a text over to Vinny. I'm sure if I drop your name in there, he'll give it up for free. For me, he's trying to charge me triple. <laughs> um, the NFL is in a weird place right now. Weird place. PR-wise, uh, the game-wise, ratings-wise, politic-wise, the NFL is in such a weird place, Shane. What's the future of the NFL? Man, I don't – I, to be honest with you, I don't like what I see because – Never in a million years would I thought – now, granted, I live here in Houston. Would I thought baseball would climb in front of the NFL as far as entertainment-wise? But Granted, I'm watching the Astros, you know, every night they're on. and But I don't – man, it's kind of – it's getting to be a point of annoying or disgusting at the same time. Yep. Um, I don't know – I don't know any other word to put for it because that's supposed to be the best game ever played. And right now, there's a bunch of stuff going on that is just not the game anymore. It's not how, when you came in the league, it's not how it was. It's damn sure not how it was when I came in the league. So, um, you know, I don't know. It's kind of it's frustrating because it's such a great sport, and it's one of the few sports that it takes all eleven on the same page at the same time to make one thing work. And uh, and right now, there's so many distractions on what's going on off of it, and with everything it's just you know whenever they called me in and they kind of released me and I, I drove home i was like well it's not the game i started playing but um it's still a great game but it's got some issues was it an amicable split between you and the texans it was strange man it was it was a weird deal because of course i've I'm, I'm never been through it and so now i can say i've done everything except when it's just full <laughs> but um <laughs> I I got called in. I was at the house. I was expecting a phone call. So I get called in, and I was literally in the building less than seven minutes. Oh, and hand over your iPad, hand over your fob to get in. I didn't even go to my locker. I told the equipment guy, bag my shit up, send it to my house. <laughs> I'm going to go I meet with a coach. I didn't. They knew what my iPad was. It, it's never been turned on. I just took the charger because I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's it. My iPad is sitting where it was the day they gave it to me. Um, will you – you're a legend of the game. Whenever you're the greatest of all time at a position, you're a legend of a game. That's what you are. Will you try to be a guy that influences the future of the NFL or whenever you're done with it, after you sail off after this Super Bowl, will you just kind of disappear forever? Or will you be a guy who's around, whether it's with the NFL PA or the NFL or anything like that? No, nah, I don't see myself doing anything like that. Um you know, I'm not going to disappear from the game because this is a game that I grew up loving. My dad, from from the day my dad won a state championship the day the year I was born as a high school football coach. He coached for 18 years, and then I go on to college, and I've never been away from this game ever until right now. This is the first time I've been away from it since day one, and I don't see myself leaving it. I definitely see myself helping out some of these high schools around here, and um, I don't know. Janikowski texted me the other day and want to know if we want to do a kicking camp, um, you know, starting whenever he retires or he's done. And I was like, you know what, there's a lot of guys getting paid to coach these punters or do these camps that have zero credibility. And they're getting paid a whole lot of money to do this. And mm -hmm. I, I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea by, you know, Janikowski to go and see if we can do some camps across the country and uh, maybe do that or maybe not do anything. <laughs> oh, fuck. We teach them kick, we get money, we drink. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite conversations. He looks good in that uniform, didn't he? Did, did you see him? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I saw him, dude. He, <laughs> he, the Polish cannon is in full force right now in Seattle. Yeah, love that guy. Uh, my, I do, too. My favorite conversation I've ever had in my entire life, we played against you and Janikowski up there, and I was in the substance abuse policy uh, substance abuse program because of what happened with me. And Janikowski walks up to me, thanks me for taking the heat off his back for being the drunk kicker. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I'm like, man, they're not letting me do anything. And Janikowski goes, go on cruise. What are they going to do, land on boats? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what he used to do, too, man. The season would end, he was like, hey, I'm going to be on a cruise for 10 days. <laughs> 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 
Uh, you're an absolute legend, man. Absolute legend. I hope you find a good home uh, to finish your career out. You've done so much for so many punters. I used to watch your film every single week when I was learning how to punt. I was just trying to be you, man. You're uh, you're an absolute legend. If you ever do those camps with Janikowski, I'd love to get involved, too, teach these kids how to bomb some balls. Sounds good, man. I, you'll be the first guy I call because I'm not going to have too many punters anymore. So just kind of, you know, like, yeah. me and you, that's it. We we'll shut this down right there. <laughs> I, I like that. Maybe we bring in a couple rookies too, take both of our jobs and keep it moving. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, a future Hall of Famer, absolute legend, guy that taught me how to kick balls basically by watching his film. A uh, guy who I hope gets on a team too. By the way, seven weeks on a team, six weeks on a team, that leg's going to be jumping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be ready. I mean, uh, you know, like like I said, it, the, the kicking schedule we had in camp and uh, OTAs and mini camp, man, that was absolutely brutal. I really felt like a rookie again. I was like, all right, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to kick me out of the game. So and, there's uh, no respect, huh? You, you, you good, felt, you felt kind of disrespected, I assume. Oh, yeah. I don't like that at all, by the way. But, I want to let you know that I don't like that you felt that way. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, but you've done a lot for the fucking game. It comes to a point where it's like, hey, some people be who you can afford to be. When you're Shane Leckler, you can be who you can afford to be. You are the guy. I want you to know that. I don't like that. I hope you find a new home kick somewhere. The game needs you, brother. I appreciate you so much, and thanks for coming on, Shane. All right. Take care, Pat. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Leckler. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. Yeah, bro. Hey, you're Later. the hey, you're really good at talking, by the what? way. You're really good at talking. You should think about doing this in uh, the future if it ever happens. Uh, all right, we'll talk about it at Vinny's deal, so just go ahead and get that lined up. <laughs> You're an idiot. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Not an amicable split there. No, not at all. Seven mm. minutes, he said he was. That's the greatest punter of all time. That guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. That guy is probably beloved by the Houston Texans teammates. He said him and J.J. Watt are best friends. The post that J.J. Watt put up whenever Shane was cut was like glowing endorsement, obviously. I'd assume he's loved by everybody. To get feel disrespected like that, I don't like that one bit. I, I honest, you can disrespect me. I'm just some bum, but fucking Shane Leckler, come on! I didn't like that. I didn't know that. That's tough to hear. Twenty something, twenty years in the league, and this, hey, you're you're done. Get out. Well, it's not yeah. even that. They try to kick him out. Yeah. So yeah. He, whenever, because Dig said he heard him say kicking schedule early in the interview. Yeah. And I kind of just passed right over it. I missed it. But then at the end there, he was talking about how they were basically trying to kick him out, mm -hmm. which is something you can definitely do because. Time waits for no man. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nature will take over at some point. Mm -hmm. You got to you gotta really count your reps as you get older, whether you're a pitcher, quarterback, punter, kicker, all these things. You got to count your reps so you're not wasting things. If they were kicking his ass every day, they were legitimately trying to just wear him out so they can get rid of him. It's like, and I just think you shouldn't be using – the greatest of all time, just using and abusing a guy. At least have a conversation with him again. Hey, we're thinking about going with a rookie instead of just punishing him, basically, which is what you're doing if you have him kick every day. They didn't even have me kicking every day. It was uh, that's a why I don't like that with Shane Leckler. That's fucked up. Well, you have Shane Leckler on fourth downs, and your offense can't do it for 20 years. You feel secure, don't you? No, oh, yeah, 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 always. You feel secure. Mm -hmm. Safe and sound. We're gonna do a very intelligent turnover here. We're gonna send in this Texas bomber whether it's in Oakland or Houston or wherever he lands in a couple weeks from now, probably the Steelers, hopefully. We're going to send this old country boy out there, and we're going to set our defense up to win because the best defense is a secure defense. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you're secure, that means you got Simply Safe. <laughs> All these home security companies promise you protection. That's 24-7, 365. But their alarms quit during storms. By the way, T's and P's right now to the East yeah. Coast. Yes. Yep. Yep. Speaking yep. of storms, T's and P's, you guys, we're all... I hope we can provide just a little bit of an escape during these potential very scary times. T's and P's to all of you. That weatherman, though, with the no self-awareness with the dick... <laughs> Gotta be, <laughs> gotta be better. Jim Cantor's out there. You think he yeah. did it on purpose? Oh, yeah. If he starts stroking it, possibly. <laughs> hey, stroke it. <laughs> <laughs> Their alarms quit during storms, power failures, Wi-Fi outages, common problems that arise for every American every day. Makes you wonder if they even know what 24-7 stands for. Heard of it? Ever heard of it? Inns know. <laughs> 
Simply Safe is there 24 7 for real. Here's what 24 7 actually looks like it's battery backups, dual cellular and Wi Fi connection, all wireless, by oh. the way. Oh. It's keeping your alarm running day and night. Mm -hmm. Day and night. Both of them. Uh, that can't be right. Day and night. <laughs> Ready to call the authorities the instant there's any trouble. That's real protection. That's Simply Safe Home Security. CNET gave Simply Safe the Editor's Choice Award. So did PC Magazine. Ty, you've wow. been talking about these, this oh, yeah. CNET and PC Magazine. CNET is not to be trifled don't with. Don't sleep on uh -uh. them. No, they don't just hand out fake awards. No, no, they don't. Not CNET. What do they stand for, Ty? To be honest, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows. But we know it's a big deal. Oh, yeah. Yep. CNET. The Center for National Intrusion tr Trespassers. Intrusion oh, intrusion with an E, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. The system is beautifully designed to look good in your home. You'll actually want to use it. And using Simply Safe makes your home safer. It's that simple. Best of all, you get 24 7 monitoring with police and fire dispatch for just $15 a month. That's it? Center for National Eradicating of Trespassing. Of course, Dix. Of course you did. <laughs> And there are no long-term contracts. Had to come back at it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> had to come back at it. Simply Safe is the best around-the-clock protection you can find. Protect your home today with free shipping and free returns when you visit simplysafe.com slash McAfee. That's S-I-M-P-L-I-S-A-F-E dot com slash M-C-A-F-E-E. Simplysafe.com slash McAfee. $15 a month. Peace of mind. Also, the way they have the app set up with the camera, it's perfect. Oh, so amazing. I got hustled into paying a lot of money for a home security system for mm -hmm. my house, and it was bullshit. It did cut off all the time. The batteries died out of nowhere. It was it was bad. Simply Safe came in, set it up, boom, boom, boom. You can set it up. It's so simple, Cave Bank can do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're allowed to use that because it's probably another company's yep. Yep. thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think anymore. I think they're retired. Just say Neanderthal. They should, Neanderthal could do it. There it is. Mm -hmm. Dilly Dilly should be retired as well. Flo but should be retired. You should retire <laughs> from any other security system other than yeah. Simply Safe. They are the best and easiest. With that being said, I think your new best friend on TV is going to be this guy we talk to next. Such an interesting character. Yeah, very good. From a soap opera mm -hmm. to becoming one of the NFL Network's premier personalities, you're going to enjoy this. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is a TV star. In more than one way, he was on Days of Our Lives, a nice soap opera actor. Like the sands of an hourglass, so are the days of our lives. He was once a cast member on The Real World, Chicago to be exact. And now every single morning you can watch him on NFL Network on the greatest morning show on television, Good Morning Football. This Friday, a new show with him hosting is debuting. An hour before Carson Palmer's A Football Life, you can catch the Kyle Brandt Football Experience on NFL Network. Ladies and gentlemen, super football brain and person. Personality, Kyle Brand. Well, let me tell you something, Mean Gene. Wow, that, that was incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hey, no problem. I just got a promo for you there, Kyle. I think you are really doing incredible things. That go Good Morning Football show, I've never been invited onto it, but watching <laughs> it, it's an incredible show. You guys do a great job. Do you want to come on? Nope. Why not? Well, I'm at the point now where you haven't invited me for numerous years. The show's been on, and I'm at the point now you can all eat shit. <laughs> uh, you broke up there a little bit. The Kyle Brandt football experience debuting yep. on Friday at 6 o'clock. What is it going to be? What's it going to be about? I can't wait to watch it. I honestly enjoy the hell out of you on television. Oh, thanks, guy. I enjoy you too, man. I uh, It's going to be nuts. I think you're going to love it. It's Day, the network has decided, in all its wisdom or insanity, to give me a half an hour on Fridays. And it's the time slot's awesome, Pat, because it's like Friday at 6 Eastern. It's like the work week is over. The football is coming. I'm ordering Indian food and opening beer and sitting down on the couch. It's an awesome pocket of time. And then they're going to put me not on like a TV set or a desk or a miniature football field or something like that. I'm in a control room surrounded by 50 monitors and like 5,000 buttons. And I can play any play from any player in any game ever. There's oh. going to be like a heavy nostalgia that rolls through this show. We'll have the best highlight from week six. 
but also the best highlight from when you were six years old. I think it's going to be really cool. You'll like it. Is this? Are you coming live from the NFL Films Vault? Because I've heard these incredible stories about the NFL Films Vault. No, I've been in the vault. I have. It's, it, I've been in the one that's in Mount Laurel, but this this will be from New York City. Man. Have you ever been to the vault? It's really cool. It's free. No, I was. I did a little bit of work with uh, NFL Network, and I heard about it. I've heard nothing but these incredible stories about the vault, and it sounds like with the Kyle Brandt football experience, you get all the access to the vault that you could possibly want just in a control room in New York City. Am I right? Yeah, and everybody who comes through, Barry, I'm going to ask you the question. Everybody who comes through, it's the same thing. I say, well, you know, we love football, or we played it, or we watch it. And all of us also have either like one player or one moment or one game when we were kids and we were growing up that hooked us and said either I want to watch this game or I want to play this game. What was that moment for you? What was your first? Randy Moss mooning the crowd, <laughs> getting fined in the parking lot, asking him if he's wrote the check yet. When you're rich, you don't write checks. Well, how do you plan on paying straight cash, homie? What's ten grand to me? Next time I'll shake my dick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you call the show, Pat. <laughs> I will have you physically press the button in front of you, and we bring up the whole the Randy Moss Mooney and it shows off the matter. So that's disgust and act. We apologize to our viewers. <laughs> we'll do it all, and then we'll do the homie, and it, we have actually said everything. So that you'll tell the story why that play, and then we'll finish it talking about like the modern Vikings and what they got going on. So it, you'll you'll love it. Uh, how did you become such a diehard? I saw you cut a promo for the Philadelphia Eagles. Are you from Philadelphia? That went viral, by the way. Great work by you. The shirt you were wearing was electric. That's on the internet. You can follow him at Kyle Brand, I believe. Why well, are you a diehard Eagles fan? How did you get into the love of uh, the NFL? Not, dude, not Eagles at all. In fact, I was born and raised in Chicago. My, I mean, my first memory is the Super Bowl Shuffle, 1985 Bears, Refrigerator Perry, Sweetness, all of that. I, I mean, I was. I was so lucky because I grew up in Chicago when I was a little kid. It was the 85 Bears, Jim McMahon, and, like, maybe the coolest team ever. And then when I got to junior high and high school, it was the Jordan Bowl. So, like, I was just blessed to be on this planet at some of the coolest times ever. The Philadelphia thing, it was just random. I, you do the show every day throughout the playoffs, and one day back in January when the Eagles were about to host the Falcons in the divisional round, and they were the first one seed to ever be an underdog at home, I started to scream on TV about how stupid it was and how everyone was just thinking that since they lost their quarterback, they have no shot of winning, and they rant this and rant there. And then, you know, the people in Philadelphia, man, if you say that no one believes in them, and you do, it, you, they're eating out of your hands. So that's how it happened. I've been to Philadelphia like three or four times in my life, and twice when I was a college player to get my ass kicked by a pen at Franklin Field. So I have, like, very few ties to Philadelphia other than I love the Eagles. Um, so you're a diehard Bears fan still, or are you just now become an NFL fan strictly because you have a morning show and you can't show bias? It's not even that I care about the bias. I'm the character on the show. I can be as biased as I want. Like, I don't have to be the big J objective. Like, I just, at this point, like, I, I make my living talking about the stuff, but I'm a huge fan of whatever team just does stuff to talk about. You know what I mean? <laughs> whatever, whatever it is. I don't care if the Bears win or lose. So if somebody does something on Instagram or something in the end zone, and it, the conversation that's my favorite player on my favorite team so aaron Rodgers, what he did to the chicago bears the place you're from on yeah. sunday night all tore it all up afterwards gives an incredible interview leads them back that must have been just gold in your eyes for good morning football it was gold man and i i've never really seen something like that i again coming from chicago like for 15 years as bears fans are like god goddamn Brett hard we cannot beat this hillbilly we cannot do it we hate him and then we like we got to get Farb out of here so we can finally win. So get him out of there, and then they bring in Rodgers, who's better, and a decade and a half of that. And it's like the other night was supposed to be different, man. I mean, we got weapons now. We spent big money, and our GM did this, and we got a quarterback and a coach who's hurt, and we're going to beat him. That movie pack played out, and, and I feel like I was watching The Revenant. It, it was just like that. Khalil <laughs> <laughs> Mack. Khalil Mack is the giant bear. I mean, perfect. He's a bear. 8,000 pounds, and he's stomping on the Packers' head and bleeding them out, and he's going to crush their skull right there on television. And then sure enough, the, the DiCaprio gets up, and he kills the bear, and he comes off from the dead, and he survives the winter. That's what Aaron Rodgers is doing now. He's the bear killer. Like, he's immortal. He can't be killed. He's wearing the bear skin in that interview afterwards, just walking through <laughs> yeah. the woods. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't put on that belt anymore, the, the state front He puts on one of those necklaces with bear claws on it that they used to have back in the day because he owns them. He's killed them. You can't 
can't win. Listen, Pat. Nobody comes back from the cart. You, you can go on the training <laughs> table, go in the little pen, you go in. If you were in the cart, the very best scenario is your night is over. More likely, if your year is over. You got Al Michaels on the call of that game, who's called every game for 50 years, who says offhandedly, well, we know Rodgers is done for the night. We'll have to No, he came back and walked out like the Undertaker. And he was like, <laughs> he was like the dead man and just tore their heart out. So the poor sweet bears. Terrible. They were having a full memorial for uh, the NFL in general for losing a character like Aaron Rodgers all the way through the halftime show. They even got Tariko in on it. I mean, the entire league was having it, and then all of a sudden Aaron Rodgers comes back. Same old song and dance. The Revenant metaphor is incredible. Let's get into this, though. Your brain is a good one. Were you a stand-up comedian? My producer said you were the producer for the Jim Rome show for a long time. How did you kind of find your way into this, from soap operas and reality shows to now being a hilarious is talking head about the NFL. How did you kind of find your way in here? Pat, you have a really diverse, interesting resume that is getting more interesting and diverse by the day. And I, I love that, man. I respect that about you because I always say that like there are millions and millions of people who have a better resume than me, but I don't think anybody's as weirder. I will take on all comers. I really think I am the Tom Brady of weird resumes. I mean, it's the stuff you mentioned, these of our lives and real world and the, the college thing and it's Nine years before we were in California, and now not only did the NFL let me in the door, that in a network full of, of Hall of Famers and award-winning journalists, like I get to have 30 minutes to mash buttons and play highlights is nuts, man. I uh, I don't even really know how it worked. I just keep kind of changing plans and changing careers, and it keeps working. I think the last step to answer your question was I worked for Rome for nine years. Um, I was his guy, his right-hand man, his, his back, his writer, all that stuff. And um, at one point, I, you know, I was kind of dabbling in TV and media like you are now. And I, you know, I had an agent that I, I convinced someone to sign me. And this crazy, brilliant British man, Michael Davies, who runs a company called Embassy Will, who has started a million shows. Yeah, going they, back yeah, yeah hey, just real, there. I don't want to interrupt you here, but he also put me on a TV show with no sound for 30 <laughs> minutes in Iowa. So... <laughs> Fuck Wait, that what was that? Tell me that. What was that? Uh, I don't want to interrupt you. It's not diverse. But Embassy Row put me on basically on Facebook's TV, 30 minutes in Iowa with no sound. 30 minutes straight, no sound. <laughs> Oh, man, really? Yeah, neither here nor there. Oh, Get I, back I, to your story, sir. I sorry. can't imagine. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. Ah, he I, should be uh, sorry. His name's on it. <laughs> well, listen, hopefully Friday night the sound pans out when I go back. I don't have another <laughs> <story>. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's going to be terrible, by the way, if it's just me. Um, but no, anyway, so then he just he gave me a call, and he said, do you want to move to New York with your family? And I had two kids under three and a wife who had been to New York one time in her life to take a selfie in Times Square, and she did it, and we're here. And two years later, somehow this, this crazy morning show with one ex-player on it and, and on the NFL Network, somehow people seem to sort of like. It's good. It's a good show. You guys keep it very, very loose. I enjoy it a lot. Were you on Rome? Thank Were you, you working for Rome? Was it your idea for the uh, check that Chris Everett? No, I didn't. I don't go back that far, but I get asked about that all the time. I mean, that that, that would happen when I was like in junior high school or something. But people always ask me about that. The you know was it staged and was it you know was it set up? And I'm like, no. Knowing very very well how Rome works, and there's no possible way it would ever be staged. Plus, like. Let's look back. I, it, Rome was like in his 20s at that time, and he had his own TV show where he would interview people on television. So the idea that he would want to, like, stage that, and, first of all, he didn't come off real well. I mean, he basically just fell on his ass, and the guy stood over him. So if you're going to stage it, you want to make yourself look a little more triumphant. It was completely authentic. I know that he would like to have that one back. What are you guys talking about uh, tomorrow morning in the NFL? Are you guys – do you guys get told what you're allowed to talk about, what you're not allowed to talk about? Because I know the commissioner, Goodell, is the boss of the NFL Network. Do they come after you yeah. guys at all? No, not really. I mean, it, it's weird. Really, we're um, the whole network's based in L.A., except for us. We're the only entity that's consistently outside of L.A. We're in New York. And look, the, the stuff that we talk about, sometimes it's, it's just it's there. It's given to us. Like tomorrow, it's, 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 we'll talk about the lot of the Thursday Night Football game, the Bengals uh, Ravens, but – yeah, you would not believe how much we can, how much creative freedom we're given. Just, you can just make up segments and do whatever we want. Like if, if we have a given segment one day, let's say we got nine minutes here, and I don't know, we want to say which Stranger Things character would which New England Patriot be. It's fine. Like we do it, and it works. And 
for some reason, they just give us complete freedom. But I get asked that like, every once in a while by, like, a family member. Like, do they make you talk about this? Do they tell you not to talk about this? I'm telling you, full out, they do not. Like, they just let us be us. It's, it's incredible. Who's going to win a Super Bowl, Kyle? I think the Patriots and the Eagles again. I think the same two teams. I mean, it's just, I would love to sit here and tell you. I know everyone loves after week one to be like, I'm going to swing out of my shoes and blow your mind with this awesome take, and it's going to be the – the, the Ravens versus the Redskins. I, no, I don't think so. Like, you know it's overreaction week. Every team that won is playing a parade. Every team that lost sucks, and they're on the clock for the draft, and they're already looking at Nick Bosa tape. No. I, I think it's – I just think the best two teams. Like, the Patriots, they haven't not been to the title game. I think it's like in seven or years or something like that. So, I think they'll be fine. And then the Eagles – I don't know. I think the, the reason the Eagles aren't that sexy to talk about is because – Everyone's playing fantasy, and everyone loves this and loves that. But the Eagles, the best parts of their team are their D-line and their O-line. So it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't jump at you in neon like having someone like Antonio Brown or Alan Kamara, who are awesome and I love. But I just think when it comes down to it, I, I still think it's the Eagles and the Patriots. And we haven't had a repeat Super Bowl, I think, since, man, like the early 90s. It's been a long time. So I think it'd be cool. Uh, do you think Lev Bell's a good rapper? I listened to a little bit of it. Juice. I can tell you something about Lev Bell, about his rapping. I thought this was interesting, Pat. Tell me how you feel about this. Okay. Lev Bell came on our show. This is two Super Bowls ago. So this is the Houston Super Bowl. Okay. Um, and he was, he was there. He was, in, he was on the set. And we've had guys do this before where they say they rap. And we're like, oh, really? You rap? Like, go ahead. Freestyle comes for Go ahead. And they've done it. Like, Keldon Smith from the Jaguars, he can just start rhyming. Or, like, Nate, who's on our show, can start rhyming. And we said, go ahead, do whatever you want. And he's like, no, no, I'm not doing it. And this is like TV where it gets kind of awkward. And we're like, whatever you want, man, start us out. You can to repeat, whatever. And he steadfastly refused to rap in front of us, which I think, as far as I understand, I have a really loose understanding of the rap game. But, like, you have to be able to freestyle to be, oh. like, a real rapper. And, oh. you know, to, to, like, to be really respected. And you got to be able to give me something. You got to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Brandt and I love Bell there. System rapper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he raps and he plays football when the money and business is right. No white <laughs> dude from Chicago is going to put him on the spot on live TV and make him rap, Kyle. That's fine, but it was also a black dude from Seattle who was doing it. It's not a color thing. We could have brought in anybody holding the boom mic or the camera. It was We could have had a, a Benetton ad of diversity in front of him. I don't think it had anything to do with that. I just didn't have the game. Uh, the Kyle Brandt football experience debuts tomorrow at 6 o'clock on NFL Network right before the Carson Palmer of Football Life. Who's been your favorite interviewer, somebody you've met through this whole NFL Network thing? Um... You know, the one we had recently was someone who uh, exceeded my expectations, and it was Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco. And let's tell you why. I, 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 I remember the, the era of Chad when he was Chad, and he was doing the celebrations, and he had this cool blonde mohawk and all that. He was really one of the most fun times to read. He was like, I think it was kind of, he was like a founding father of all the celebrations you see now. But then I feel like the Chad Johnson thing, when he changed his name, and he was in Hard Knocks, and his catchphrase that, t shirt that. I feel like it got kind of jumped to Sharpie. Like, I don't know, maybe if he had a show with T.O., it's fine. I just moved past it. So I expected him to come on and just be, I don't know, in same mode constantly or trying to whatever bumper sticker phrase he's got going, whatever, and that would be fine. But he came on, like, first of all, he came out in a Rage Against the Machine t-shirt, which you just don't see very much, and we said he was a huge fan of Rage Against the Machine and Skinner, which I thought was interesting. And then he was just like, Real, real deep and insightful, soulful almost about what the game and what it means to him and the toll that it takes. And I didn't expect that from Chad. I thought he was just going to be neon and lights and catchphrases, but he was actually a really, really cool guy. That might have been after. Maybe he had one of the Mayawasa things. Maybe he had a. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he had a yeah, rebirth. He might. <laughs> he might. He also told us that he said he eats McDonald's. Every day, yeah. and I'm like, when you say every day, you mean it like a couple times a week? He goes, no, dude, I hit McDonald's every single day of the year, and like I'm like for real, like that guy in that documentary, and he goes, yeah, they were the same thing. He said, you know, whatever he rattled off, number one, no pickles, blah blah blah, every day, and I'm like, I like McDonald's as much as the next guy, but that's not horrible. I wouldn't even want to 
three or four times a week, every day, and huh. shred it. And I hate that. Well, <laughs> not all men are created equal, and not all TV hosts are created equal. Kyle Brandt, you're next level, brother. Good morning, football. Every single morning on NFL Network. Also, check out the Kyle Brandt football experience debuting tomorrow where he's in a control room, taking you down a little nostalgia lane in the NFL. So thankful you joined us, ladies and gentlemen. I assume he's going to be an NFL Hall of Famer at some point with the way he's dictating <laughs> and changing the game. Kyle Brandt. Thank you, brother. Okay. Thrilled to be on, man. I've always watched you. I've always read your stuff. I've listened to you. I mean that. This was really cool when I thought your name was the guy I had to call. I would do it anytime, dude. Thank you so much. Ah, that means a lot, and I hope you come back. You're really electric, brother. I appreciate you. Good luck with your new show. 6 o'clock on Friday. Terrible time slot, by the way. I know you're trying to sell that. That's a <laughs> terrible time slot. Good luck. I hope you do great. You're an electric human. Thank you, Kyle. Anytime, Pat. Cheers, brother. I like the quick wits. Yeah. yeah. He's awesome. He's a good time. A lot of energy there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I've been a fan of his for like 10 plus years, and I'm glad he's finally kind of getting a little more shine. He always used to kind of be the guy in the background, but I'm glad he's getting his own thing. Since Days of Our Lives? <laughs> like the sands <laughs> of an hourglass. <laughs> People watch those. So are the days of our lives. You ever been sick and just stay at home and just turn on for a no. little bit? No, because I'm not a mom, but a lot of moms. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot, a lot of moms are out. A lot of moms are watching Days of Our Lives. Mark Schlereth was on a soap opera, I think, at some point, yeah. too. Hmm. I think he has a date. Maybe wow. Days of Our Lives, actually. Really? Yeah, that place runs the gamut of celebrities. <laughs> I assume they make good money, too. Mm -hmm. My mom used to watch soap operas back in the day. Back in the day. It was one of those things her and Zito just sat down and watched. <laughs> <laughs> Zito, that fresh haircut of yours? Yep. It's making your face look better. That's good. Uh -huh. But there's something you can't do with hair. Uh. Once you've lost it, it's gone forever. It's tough. Yeah. Fun fact here, 66% of men lose their hair by the age of 35. Dick, Zito, Nick, you guys are in the majority, not the minority. Okay? Yep. Something to make think about. Feel any better, Pat. I think it should. It should. You're a big fraternity mm -hmm. of bald motherfuckers at a young age. Mm -hmm. Hey, I willingly took my hair. <laughs> I mean, to this extent. So humble. But we're talking about previously. Yeah. I, I saw no problem with my hair previously. See, that's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Is that hairline slowly starting to move backwards? Yeah. Any bald spots yet? How will you feel a year from now if it's business as usual up there, Nick? Feels pretty good to be honest. I <laughs> ask you, liberating. Do you want a bald spot to pop up, or do you want to do something? About I got like four of them. Something about it. Do you want your hairline to recede, or do you want to do something about it? Do, do something, something about it. Why do guys turn to weird solutions or do nothing? Why do nothing? When they can turn to medicine and science. Oh, ever heard of it? Yup. Yeah. Yep. Love science. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. Well known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep. Your, your hair. hair. No snake oil pills. No. Uh -uh. No gas station counter supplements. Uh -uh. These are prescription solutions backed by science. There's no waiting room, no awkward in-person doctor visits. You can save hours by going to 4 It's so easy. Answer a few quick questions. A doctor will review and can prescribe you. Products are shipped directly to your door. Mm. Save your hair. Don't leave your house. It look better one year from now. Is hair starting to kind of maybe come off in a shower? A little bit. Yeah. Are things starting to maybe go a different direction than they have been in the past? Might. Mm. You might not even know it, but you could be losing your hair at the moment. It's hard to get it back after you've lost it, Zito, but you can keep the hair you have with 4 com. Order now, and listeners of this show will get a trial month of hymns for just $5 today. Right now, while supplies last. See website for full details. This would cost... Hundreds. And hundreds. If you went to the doctor or a pharmacy, go to forhims.com slash pat. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash pat. Forhims.com slash pat. Also, while you're there, you can snoop around, keep your hair. Snoopy dope. And also, maybe get a little skincare and sexual wellness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A little boosty boost for the paint. One stop shop. Well, one maybe stop. make your skin look better. <laughs> Four hymns is exactly that. Four, all the hymns. Mm -hmm. All the hymns. All of them. All of them. I love them. My hair is really good, so I won't mm -hmm. lose it. Mm -hmm. But I use their sexual wellness and skincare stuff. Uh, my lady loves it. 
If you want yeah. a sweet Dallas shag, but you're afraid it won't grow back, use four hymns. Four hymns dot com. When you're showered and hair is getting down there and clogging up the toilet. Ducks fly together. Four hymns dot com. <laughs> Good reference though. <laughs> Uh, that's about it for us today. We're so thankful you listened. Uh, Diggs has some quick picks for this weekend. If yep. you want to gamble real quick, let's go ahead and knock We're those out. We already talked about Baltimore tonight minus one. Yep. Love the Colts at Washington plus six. Uh, I'm going to bet against the Bills until they cover. Chargers minus seven. Oh. Uh, there, you can't find this line every once in a while. Or it's some places because uh, they don't know if Rodgers is going to play or not. But I, fa- I found it. Vikings plus one and a half at Green Bay. You like it. Give me them. The and guy just came out in the second half down 17 zip with one fucking leg and beat the the Chicago Bears and Khalil Mack. Don't care. Uh, Giants <laughs> plus three at the uh, Cowboys. There Spurs, you go. Spurs go to mybookie.ag. Lock those in. Promo code Pat. Shout out Simply Safe. Shout out forhims.com. Tweet us. Hashtag Endgame. Hashtag Endgame for some of our new merch, which comes out today. A picture of. Hmm. And we wait. Uh, ah, I know what it is. Oh, no, no, no. Make it. Your favorite moment in NFL history for that Kyle Brandt show. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A picture or video of your favorite moment. Uh, don't pick mine. That would be pandering because I don't pick anyways. Ty Schmidt picks. Mm-hmm. Uh, win new merch. Yep. Uh, it'll be much easier to get than the Centaur shirt now that we control our own merch. Correct. Uh, you send in one that makes us laugh. We'll appreciate it. Hashtag Endgame. Hashtag Endgame. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, Hell in a Cell is this Sunday. A man with a wrestling conversation that you must hear. If you're not into wrestling, have a great day. If not, ladies and gentlemen, world's strongest man. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me now is the documented world's strongest man. He was a gold medal winner at the Pan American Games in lifting of weights. He's a WWE Hall of Famer, legendary human being, and a man. Who carried me to Brooklyn from Times Square? <laughs> living legend, football fan, Mark Henry. Mark. And one fine, proud American. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Mark? I appreciate you so much for joining me. Obviously, I've told the story of you carrying me home while I'm puking my guts out. I, I, I need to give you a public thank you here on the airwaves right now. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate the public thank you, but it was completely unnecessary. I've been carrying drunk wrestlers for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> I think, to be honest, me being able to tell a story about the world's strongest man carrying me home one night <laughs> is a truly beautiful thing, and it feels good to be in a long list of probably much more legendary humans than I'll ever become in my lifetime. <laughs> well, oh, come on now. You're, you're, you're a damn kicker punter that fucking almost took somebody's head off (laughs) (laughs) so let's get into that gotta count for something let's get into that so mark and i met uh the same day he ended up carrying me home Uh that night i met him at a uh it was an international cocktail affair party he was sitting in the back very nice man i've been a fan for a long time i meet him i chat with him it was me him and samoa joe hanging out it was a pretty cool little moment there then we start chit-chatting i end up meeting him out at i think it was rosenberg's podcast first and then i end up at caroline's for uh dolph ziggler stand-up show that i slept through the entire thing i feel very (laughs) bad about that i bought everybody shots and passed out and then mark henry had to carry me home and it was the next morning i think whenever you might have like who the hell was that guy i was with yesterday and you did some research and found out that i was a ball kicker on sundays am i correct <laughs> well the, the actual um i saw it but it was the next day i saw it but i i remembered that i had seen it before i just didn't put two and two together that that was you that actually did that <laughs> and when, when i did see it i was like well Son of a gun. Look at here. <laughs> and I tell you what, like when I called you, I called you like a little kid because, you know, I play ball and, you know, we always picked on the, the punters and kickers <laughs> about how they tackle. And you you you're not in that in that class. Like you, you, you uh, got my respect. Well, you, you did. I was very uncomfortable because Sam Roberts was telling me the whole story, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you embarrassed yourself in front of Mark Henry." And then I heard you were there, and I was like, "I don't want to go talk to the guy." And you were like, "No, no, no." I saw a video of you tackling somebody. I respect you. I'm like, "Okay, me and Mark Henry are friends." I think I was pretty excited about it, Mark. Hell yeah, we definitely friends. I tell you what, I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, uh, getting together with you when I come to Indianapolis, 
uh, on the next month on the ninth. Well, I tell you what, SmackDown comes to Indianapolis on October uh, 9th, and Mark Henry will be here. I believe he's doing some signings in Indianapolis. I can't wait for the people to come meet you. Let's talk about it now, Mark. Your co-host of the um, the the great show with Dave LaGreca, Busted Open, the in, infamous the, show, infamous show with Bubba Ray Dudley also on there on Sirius XM every single day. You wrestled for all those years. You're now a WWE producer. You're loved by everybody in the WWE world. I haven't heard a single bad thing about you. What is life happening right now for Mark Henry? What do you do? What What is the future for Mark Henry? And what is Mark Henry doing nowadays? Well, I mean, I'm 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 definitely I'm I'm doing the radio thing, and I, I love being at SiriusXM. Uh, it's giving me a chance to give my opinion and tell people. Uh, exactly who I am outside of wrestling all the years that they've seen me. They get to see more uh, or hear more. Uh, I just finished, uh, well, I just debuted a show on HBO, Random Acts of Flyness. Um, I'm doing some acting now, too. Uh, I'm being super dad. My son had his first football game yesterday. He balled out. Um, I mean, it was it's, it's just been a real good experience getting to meet fans traveling the world now doing appearances and comic cons and uh if people want to reach me they can reach me at mark henry uh shit i can't even remember my own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see that's it's that cte's creeping in <laughs> <laughs> no nah, but you can you can reach me at mark henry 640 at gmail.com um and i'm the mark henry on everything social media so uh, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of, but it, it, I'm having a good time doing the appearances and the uh, signings and stuff and traveling. I went to London, uh, did a strongman seminar in Winnipeg, Canada, and actually emceed the strongman show the next day. So I'm, I'm staying pretty busy. Well, you are the man. After meeting you, it's, it makes a lot of sense why people want you to be everywhere. Your wrestling career was one that spanned decades. I mean, it was an incredible run with the WWE. There's there's no way you could have known that you would end up being the sports entertainer that ends up in the Hall of Fame whenever you were the world's strongest man and in those powerlifting competitions. Or was that the plan all along, Mark? Not at all. I'd be lying my ass off if I said I knew that was coming. <laughs> like, I... I I was one of the guys, one of the things that is held true my whole career is I'm very competitive and I don't want to be outdone. So anybody that is ambitious and wants to have success, uh, you got to be a little envious, a little jealous of other people's success and try to match it. And that is exactly what I've done. Uh, I saw people, I was fortunate enough to be in a, in an organization I don't call ourselves a faction. I say we're an organization because we still talk to gay today and we still do a bunch of things together. Uh, the nation of domination. The nation the Ryan, Ryan of domination. And man, these, these guys are, were all professional men outside of wrestling. They, everybody was doing something. And I was like, man, I'm not just going to be a wrestler. I'm, I'm going I'm to do the full gambit of, uh, of entertainment and that's what I prepared myself for and uh, it's, it's been one of the biggest uh, compliments to my character is the fact that uh, I'm very competitive and I want to succeed. Uh, it's very publicly known that a WWE wrestler's schedule and travel is lunacy almost. And back in the day, I think even more so than it already is now, they're traveling around the world in a week nowadays. Back in the day, you guys used to work 300 and some odd days a year, only a couple of days off. Was the schedule something you could have ever expected? And what was one of the most crazy runs or trips you went on? Oh, my God. Man, I had no clue. If they'd have told me that the schedule was like that, I'd have been like, nah, no thanks, y'all. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the the craziest run I had was uh, 36 days in a row. Oh, and Jesus. we did three TVs on Sunday. So we, we basically knew we were going to be on the road for at least three weeks. So you do three TVs excuse me, three TV shows, and um, then the shows, all everything that you do after that has to meet with those other three shows. So you had to think three weeks ahead. So it was, I mean, it was crazy, man. And I, I think that year, 
was the year that I did the most days in a row. I mean, most days in a calendar year. I did 228 days. Jesus. And that was, I mean, that's the most for me. But people like Ric Flair and John Cena and The Rock, because they're the champion, because they're the draw, uh, the main draw, um, they have to be at almost every show, every live show, every televised show. So even if they don't wrestle and they're on the show, they get in, they, you know, get in the limos because, you know, they didn't, they didn't drive rental cars like us. <laughs> you know, they, they, the limo would pull up, they jump out, they go do their thing, they get back in the limo and they're already at the next town before the show is over. Do you so, think, I mean, it's, with that being said, do you think John Cena and even Roman Reigns now deserve a lot more respect and credit from the fans because of just the grueling work schedule that they've been through in the last like decade? Yeah, and that that's that's the thing about to the fans that I don't understand. Uh, booing Roman Reigns is like uh, booing Sweet Baby Jesus because <laughs> you you cannot. He wants to be champion. He wants to be the guy that carries the load. He wants to be the guy that shows up every week for you. And uh, John Cena, it was thrust upon him, but he wanted it too. And if if anybody says different. I suggest you ask John Cena because I rode with him when he first started, when he was, I mean, the prototype before John Cena was even born. And he was one of those that was like, man, I really want to do this. And and he's got that, that, that ambition, that drive. And those guys deserve all the credit and they deserve all the money that they get too, because they carry the load. They deserve probably more uh, because they really want it. Coolest atmosphere outside of America that you've ever competed in? The coolest atmosphere, Spain. Uh, we we compete in bullfighting arenas. <laughs> we've um, we've competed in coliseums. Um, I mean, like it's it's ridiculous, man. Uh, you could almost feel the death in those places. <laughs> you, know, you, you you walk in and you know it's like. The bullfighting runs. I'm a, I'll send you some pictures of me standing in front of these runs where the where the lion where they sent the lions and tigers out to kill people. Like I mean, it was it's just the being a coliseum. It was just really really weird. I I couldn't even fathom. That. <laughs> oh, this is the same place where uh, lions would come right out of the cage, kill a human, and then walk right back into the cage. That would be an interesting feeling. I could imagine. <laughs> How many countries have you been in, Mark? Have you kept tally? I have all of them. Nah. <laughs> you know what, man? Like, I, I've, I've been to every continent other than the North Pole, the South Pole, and Antarctica. And when they start doing shows there, I'll be there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Hell in a Cell is this but Hell in a Cell is this every, week. Yep, go ahead. I'm sorry. Every major city in America and every major city in the world, uh, I've, I've been to at least one. Um, and that's that's the beauty of of uh, what the WWE and what wrestling has done for me and my family. Like I've been able to see the world and have exposure and understanding of different people's cultures uh, for almost tw almost thirty years, twenty four years. And like I mean, it's it's just a um, a learning tool that you know I I try to extend when I do shows like yours and mine and um anytime that i meet with people in these uh question and answer sessions like i i say man like ask some good questions because i've got some good answers <laughs> well okay here's a good question um as a man who sometimes enjoys having a good time i think you got a chance to witness that what's a city in the world that i need to visit and have a good time in oh barcelona spain <sighs> Barcelona, Spain is is just ridiculous. Uh, I would not say Belfast, Ireland, because I spent the night in jail there. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, man, a dude tapped me. I had a raw silk shirt. Anybody that's up to fashion that knows raw silk, the amount of raw silk, silk that it, it, it requires to cover me uh, <laughs> is a... Uh, an exorbitant amount of money. It's about a six hundred dollar shirt, and this guy taps me on my shoulder with a sharpie, 
And every time he touched me, a, like a rainbow effect went into my shirt. Not today. It, it, just, it just ruined the shirt. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And he was like, oh, man, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just a shirt, man. Then, you know, I'm like, no, it's not just a shirt. <laughs> and I got all pissed and bent out of shape about it. And he's like, well, you don't have to be an asshole. And I had a drink in my hand. I threw a drink in his face. <laughs> and and uh, I dared him on his family to come outside so I could rip his skin off his body. <laughs> and the, um, he wouldn't do it, of course. But then they called the police and they took my ass to jail. <laughs> I'm very excited I didn't have a Sharpie the night you carried me home. That could have ended a lot yeah, different. You, you know the nice, sweet Mark Henry, but I tell you what, it is a bastard underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big-time football fan. You said your kid plays. Did you watch the opening weekend of the NFL, and do you have any takeaways, Mark? Oh, my God, man. I tell you what, it was not a good week for all of virgin coaches. All of the guys that um, had their coaching debuts, head coaching debuts, got their ass kicked. And a lot of that is the football game, the pro game is just different than any other um, facet. If you're a coordinator, a lot of times you, you, you don't get the practice of uh, making sure not only the proper calls are made, but in the situation in which that call needs to be made. It's just experience-based. And, you know, Gruden didn't have a, uh, an excuse. He should have he done a lot better. And uh, he just, I think, uh, went into – the up the the booth mode and it just didn't work in the second half. He so, said, "Hey, by the way, uh, he said that he wished they could have got to the quarterback more. Do you, do you think uh, maybe he he was missing a particular player?" Oh <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Khalil Mack, what I a tell, debut! I'll tell you what, Khalil Mack showed and paid dividends the first second that he was on the field in Chicago. And they missed him. They needed him. He was the catalyst for uh, their defense. And you know what? That was a mistake. When you're trying to show who's got the biggest ball, sometimes you might want to realize that the person that you're competing against is the one that has them. And <laughs> Khalil Mack was that guy. And he, he just he made a, 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 just a colossal mistake trying to be the boss. Speaking of having huge gut sack, what's Vince McMahon like on a daily basis? You know what, Vince is, uh, everybody thinks he's the he's evil, gene, he's, he's uh, just a horrible human being. But, you know, when my mother died, um, I was not in a state of mind to be there. And Vince told me, he said, listen, Mark, you need to go home. He said, you come back when you're ready. And he paid me every day. I was gone. So he, he's got a level of loyalty from me and a lot of the guys that people will never understand because he's that guy. But he expects you to work like he would work. And and who doesn't? If yeah. I own a company, I want you to sacrifice too. I don't want to be the only one with skin in the game. So um, that you take that and then you make your assessment of who you think Vince McMahon is. He's built up a publicly traded company from scratch. He's the most underrated genius in the history. I've always said it. Yeah, I, I think that in the, in, in the next century, you'll be hard-pressed to find another man or woman that was able to build from scratch a billion-dollar industry, multiple billion-dollar industry, that equals what he's built. I mean... I, I, would, I'm, I wouldn't doubt that whatsoever. Like It would take an, another 100 years for that to happen. Mark, you had a really long run in, uh, run in the WWE. Really impressive. Was there a favorite? Or... Who the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> His name is Nick. He's, uh, he, we, he's actually one of Elias' high school friends. We went to high school with Elias. He's one of his really good friends. Big, 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 big WWE fan coming in hot in your ears. We, right we, are, we all know Elias doesn't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> You had a long, very successful I'm joking, run. I'm joking, Nick. Hey, man, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? You had a long, very successful run. Was there, uh, and a lot of evolution with your character over the years, was there one that stood out to you in particular that was kind of a favorite? You went from the strongest man to the nation to sexual chocolate. Was there one that stood out to you that you like enjoyed the most? 
Uh, I guess uh, the Hall of Pain era was the one that I enjoyed the most because they allowed me to be exactly the opposite of me. <laughs> and, um, like, there were times where I went out and I told guys, hey, man, I, I, if I lose it, just get out of the ring. Because Vince told me, he was like, look, sometimes you just got to scare people. He's like, I want to see you uh, do exactly uh, the opposite of what we see you as. Everybody knows you're a great guy, Mark. Come on, but we want you to be a monster. And I was allowed to go out there and say what came to my mind. When I said, if I start charging for air, keep your damn bill paid, I meant it. <laughs> and there there was a, a bunch of times that I will split your head to the white meat and the, you know, just all of the sands and stuff. And it, everybody loved that stuff. And I suppressed that monster because that monster would get me killed in the real world <laughs> because nobody's, nobody's going to fight that dude. They're going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, man, look, if I can prepare, portray this character and not get killed hey it's a win-win so you had to harness that bastard you got underneath there huh man i have to i mean even now i'm i'm a i'm an old chiseled grizzled vet, veteran and if i if i act remotely close to that everybody in texas has a gun <laughs> <laughs> If, if I get out of my car and go, hey, what the hell? <laughs> I just don't, just don't be, I'm going to get a, a center mass, about three or four shots. Uh, how much did Vince McMahon? So, I mean, like, I'm, 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 no, I'm, I, I joke around a lot, but that was the best time for me in wrestling. Even though the, it was not the most, um, it was not the most profitable time, but it was a lot of fun being uh, the angry uh, hated Mark Henry. How much help does Vince McMahon give people for their characters? Like he told you, he wants you to be this monster. Does he do that with everybody, or is he pick and choose? He picks and chooses. Um, I created Sexual Chocolate, and <laughs> uh, like 16 years ago, 17 years ago, and still every time I get in front of the people, uh, a Sexual Chocolate chant goes on. So it was, it was. I, I take a lot of pride in that. And it was so much fun to do that character. Um, like, you you go out and everybody's expecting one thing, and then you give them comedy and you give them that. And, you know, like, that's that's the thing that I love the most. I mean, you, you we laughed on this show already three or four times because it's fun. Like, I want to have fun. I want to have a good time. I want people to come away from the experience with me knowing that you was entertained, but you was a little bit afraid, but you <laughs> laughed a little bit. Like, I mean, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. And Vince, Vince allows you to uh, put that out in front of the people. And if it works, it works. If it don't, then they snatch it and you start doing something else. This weekend, Hell in a Cell, big night on Sunday night for a lot of things. Hell in a Cell has created a lot of big moments. What are you looking forward to most, Mark? Well, I definitely, I mean, the main event, you know, to see Braun Strowman, uh, and Roman Reigns go in there. And, and now that they made the tag to see, you know, Drew McIntyre and Dolph uh, go up against the uh, insane Dean Ambrose and um, one of my favorites uh, in, in, the, in the company right now, Seth Rollins, like that's going to be a really, really good combination of people to work against. And I, I think people are going to get their money's worth. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I can't wait to watch it. And, Mark, I am so thankful for you coming on the show, for you carrying me home. I can't wait to see you again. I'll be at the next NXT TakeOver. Mark Henry, you are the epitome of a professional, my brother, and thank you so much for joining us. You can check him out every single day on Busted Open, Sirius XM, the best wrestling talk on earth, the world's strongest man. Mark Henry, thank you, Mark. Man, thank you, brother. I'll see you soon, man. You got it, Mark. Hey, Mark, don't be scaring any white people down there in Texas. <laughs> man, not everybody, not just white people, it's going to be everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world's strongest man, Hall of Famer, Mark Henry. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate y'all. Cheers, man. Take care, brother. All right, man. You're the best.